and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. Let's not waste a minute because a lot to cover today. As usual, I'm going to share with you our agenda. First up, let's take a look at where the markets close for the week. Rather choppy, but certainly not a great week for the markets. Also going to take a look at some of those top headline news items that drove price action this week. From there, we are going to, sh- I will share with you areas of the market that are bucking this downtrend. There are areas that are holding in well, and there are sound reasons for that as well. Also, potential hedges in this currently difficult market environment. And last up, I wanted to share with you that next week, I do have an eight week mentorship that begins. There will be a link below. You can get further information, kind of a once in a lifetime thing I'm super excited about. So let's get started here and take a look at some of the bigger takeaways from last week. And first up, we can certainly talk about how Fed Chair Powell's comments to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, where he made it quite clear that a half of a percent increase in the Fed funds rate was all but written in. And that in turn, I would say roiled the markets. Uh, From my estimation, I thought that it had already been built in. But now, of course, there is talk that the follow-up meeting may see an even higher uptick in the Fed funds rate, which in turn uh, spiked yields. And that is our next headline. Bond yields did rise to their highest level and even beyond that three-year peak, given the comments from Powell. We did see the U.S. dollar gain Throughout the week, I'm going to get into the impact there because that was another major driver as it related to deterioration, certainly in certain areas, and bellwether stocks. Also, earnings season, another big driver of price action, and unfortunately, not all good. So I will be sharing those select areas that are faring okay, but by and large, despite coming in ahead of estimates, we're not seeing this current, what has reported so far, having any really constructive uh, price action for the broader markets. And then next week, we will see earnings season pick up even further. We do have four of the uh, bank stocks, actually five, I wanted to make sure I got that correct, that will be reporting their earnings next week. And we did certainly see the big negative impact that Netflix had stock down over 35% due to reduced subscribership. And then in turn, that did spark a downtrend earlier in the week. So let's get started here and take a look at the broader markets. We want to make sure that you're on top of what is taking place. And I am going to start this week. Usually I start with the S&P 500, but here we are with the NASDAQ composite. And I am starting with this because this week's 3.5% drop in the NASDAQ, it did put the NASDAQ back into bear market territory as defined by down 20% or more. While it may simply be a statistic, oftentimes it can have a mental or a more psychological impact as it relates to investor sentiment. We can see the outside momentum indicators are negative here. Your RSI down and trending lower. And likewise with the stochastics, and certainly we were really looking forward to a continuation of this rally before we saw the significant decline taking place in the NASDAQ. From here, let's go ahead, take a look at the S&P 500 index. And I see it up here. We are going to look at a daily price chart of this as well, not quite as down as the NASDAQ, but a 2.3% drop. And you can see a lot of that negative price action took place today. We did go into the midweek period, actually up for the week. And then over the last two days, uh, swift selling has brought this index down. 
And we are unfortunately below this trading range that had been holding in for a week and a half. So not looking constructive on the S&P 500, your RSI, that relative strength indicator, and the stochastics, both in negative territory. So overall, the broader markets are not healthy and not in good standing. So as usual, from here, we're going to take Take a look at what is taking place beneath the surface. And first up, we are looking at the 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500. And I've gone ahead and added this RSI relative strength. We want to see where, if anywhere, we are seeing some relative outperformance. And then, of course, be very aware of the super negative uh, areas, making sure you're not heavy uh, weight it there. So let's take a look because this is a two month daily price chart of these 11 sectors. And up here in the forefront, your relative outperformers. So let's take a look at first up here consumer staples. And they were actually positive for the week, really, only two. Uh, sectors were positive and they were staples and real estate stocks. I've been highlighting these certainly over the past several weeks. A couple of catalysts here. Number one is earnings. Both areas came out, had bellwether companies that reported constructive uh, quarterly results and then also guide it higher. Also, we have that nice inflation hedge that is really attractive given the currently very high inflationary background. So from here, we can see utilities up here in the forefront. They did decline for the week. However, they did fare better than the broad markets. Energy coming under pressure. And this is all about that US dollar, certainly one factor. We will get further into that as we move on. Consumer discretionary up here down less than the broader markets. We did see Tesla among those FANG stocks was up 2%. We will take a look at that chart as we move forward. But I did want to share with you that overall, this discretionary space, although we had this sharp uptick here in mid-March, we are very much in a downtrend, a lot in the way of down and out retailers that just are not able to lift themselves off the mat, so to speak. And um, we can see healthcare is continuing to deteriorate after hitting a new high in price two weeks ago. And certainly not constructive. It was down more than the S&P 500. Hopefully I can get into that if we have time. For those of you subscribers to my MEM Edge report, I most definitely will be drilling down into this area and sharing as well as others what is taking place beneath the surface. Uh, material stocks, again, over the last two days, we can see this sharp deterioration. Again, US dollar related. We'll take a look at the dollar in our next segment here. Uh, but we do also, I want to share with you, this is XLC. And so when we look at these sectors, communication services, one thing that I always advise is that you're aware of those key heavyweight components within a given sector. And Netflix, while not a top component, is certainly a heavyweight. And we did see that 35% decline there. The bigger names for XLC are Facebook and Google. And Facebook was down 12.5% ahead of the release of their earnings next week. Google down 6%, another company due to report next week. And those two companies account for about 40% of the weighting of this communication services sector. From here, as usual, we want to drill down even further behind those 11 ETFs and the sectors also with an eye toward undercover, uncovering where potential outperformance and strength is. And unfortunately, this week, with that view, we can see that these areas that are up here in the forefront are not industry groups. They are more in the way of metrics that have driven price action. 
So here we are looking at the yield on that 10 year, and you can see this significant increase over the last six weeks. We can go ahead and pull up a weekly chart to gain even further insight as to the significant advance since the beginning of this year. And of course, this yield increase has had a really big impact in a lot of areas in the broader market. So this remains one of the key drivers as it relates to price action. We're seeing growth stocks being uh, not acting well in the face of higher interest rates and other areas as well that are impacted. I'll show that as we move on. Here we are with that US dollar and I talked about the increase um, certainly, we can look at the weekly on this metric as well, and you can see the steady increase in the U.S. dollar. This is negatively impacting select areas. I'll share with you as we move on. Certainly, those larger companies that export quite a bit are going to be heavily impacted, but other areas such as commodities, we did look at that basic materials ETF, one area, another area, gold. We uh, will take a quick peek at oil price as well. So as we see the dollar increase, these are areas that are historically going to be negatively impacted. Brent crude has its own dynamics taking place outside of being very closely linked to the US dollar, but we did see a little bit of a dip there. And on the upside, unfortunately, volatility, it spiked today. We're back in that upper 20, tw close the week at 28. And we were beginning to show signs of, at the very least, getting down into that 20. I've mentioned in the past, if we can get below 18, the average historically is about 16 for this volatility or fear index. So to see this spike is not good news for the broader market. So let's go ahead back and take a look at some of these other areas to make sure that you're aware of what is taking place. This week, I did put the uh, Vanguard Value Fund as well as the Vanguard Growth Fund. And what I wanted to highlight and point out to you here is during previous weeks, we've seen this is the value ETF, BTV is the ticker symbol. And more recently, as growth has deteriorated, we did see a nice uptick in this value ETF. But over the last two days, this ETF also has been deteriorating, and it, uh, which I did. I looked at those top 10 holdings here in the Vanguard value ETF. And I will tell you that the deterioration is earnings related and as well as some of these value areas also getting hit as well. So take a quick look here at the growth component. And this is what I was talking about as growth has continued to deteriorate. Uh, VUG is that ticker, and it does have a number of those large cap bang stocks that are a part of it. Let's take a quick look here at semiconductors. And the primary reason is because this is a big part of technology, but more importantly, we did see a little bit of a rally in the beginning of the week in some of these semiconductor stocks, all about earnings. However, we did close the week down about 1.3% for the week. We gave up those earlier week gains, but net net, the confirmed downtrend in those semiconductor stocks remains very firmly in place. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at some areas that are holding in well. So first up, I will take us to, I'm gonna to go to the, inter, the uh, initial interface page here for stockcharts.com and share with you one way that you can get a peek into those areas that are potentially outperforming quite simply by taking a look at those stocks, for instance, in the S&P 500 that were up today. I shared with you how today was a very damaging day 
and a lot in the way of negative price action on those broader market indices. But take a look, here are 10 stocks that fared well. So what I'm gonna do from here is share with you a candle glance two month daily price chart view. And the reason here is because I will walk us through several of the stocks on this list as it relates to being able to buck the downtrend today and share with you why. So first up, we're looking at Kimberly Clark, KMB. The stock closed today up 8%. Take a look at that gap up. We weren't quite able to get a gap up into a base breakout, but the stock really had been down and out. Huge volume characteristics. And this is all about earnings. The company has been able to secure sales growth despite high supply chain cost and the result was this gap up on huge volume. So of course, if market pressures were not in place, I would argue that this stock that would certainly have further upside given those price dynamics. Next up is SVB Financial. And this is another company that is all about earnings with this gap up. We can see the stock closed today up 7.5%. And I will tell you, however, the stock unfortunately remains in a very confirmed downtrend. I say unfortunately because SVB Financial has been a big winner for my MEM Edge report in the past when this particular banking group can get going. This tends to be one of your better performers. It's super strong management, high growth, very solid company, despite this gap up still in a downtrend. Let's take a quick look at Twitter. It's certainly been in the news of late with Elon Musk. Headlines now read that it is all but potentially a given. He's making more moves as it relates to buying out Twitter, whether it takes it public, he takes company public or not. But let's take a look at these price dynamics here as it relates to the stock. We had this gap up on that original Elon Musk bid, if you will. He purchased over nine and a half percent in shares of the company. And it did pull back as investors digested the potential of new leadership at the helm. And so now we are seeing the right side of a base forming here as investors are seemingly convinced that it will take place. And the expectation is that Musk will cut costs and really smooth out uh, at operations at Twitter. So what we're going to be on the lookout for is a break back above that 200-day simple moving average. Your outside momentum indicators have remained constructive. Uh, this is a stock that I actually picked up back here. No idea that this Musk a bid would take place, but very simply, the stock was in the throes of reversing its downtrend. I sold on this particular day, but it is on my watch list. Certainly, if we see uh, positive price dynamics, this would help the cause for Twitter. So as we move forward, EA, Electronic Arts, this was all about the release of a new video product, again, in the throes, but a very sloppy chart, not one that would catch my eye. I did want to just cover a couple of other names here and share with you again how you can use that top 10 list as a guide. United Airlines, this is all about earnings. So we, the company did come out similar to Delta Airlines two weeks ago, and we can see this gap up into a base breakout. And that is your most powerful uh, base formation when we get that gap up to a new near-term high out of that base. Take a look at this huge volume. And then today we did see a follow-through rally. So airlines are one area that are holding in. And I will go ahead and take a brief break right now. And we have lots more to cover. So stick around. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. 
and this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that will help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And we are back from here. I was going to spend just another minute on the strength that we've seen in the US dollar of late. And one of the primary drivers of that stronger dollar is because the Fed's hawkish stance. We talked about Fed Chair Powell speaking yesterday on Thursday, and in turn, the dollar ticked even higher. So what happens during that period is that higher US yields are coming into play with the Fed taking action in their next meeting to raise rates. And in turn, foreign dollars come in to buy those higher yielding US bonds. They are going to be using local currency, which in turn strengthens the dollar. And from there, this is the type of negative impact that can take place. So we're looking at a daily price chart of Caterpillar. And the stock had been in a very confirmed uptrend, had that base breakout. This move was last Friday on an analyst upgrade for their outlook. So we can see how that the gain subsequent and then some was reversed. Caterpillar is a big exporter of huge construction machinery, and it is the type of stock, certainly industrials in general, that are very global facing will get negatively impacted. One other name that we can take a quick look at is Deer, another one that was on the rise, but again, that higher dollar really hitting the stock. So we'll keep an eye on that because this really has been a volatile name to begin with in the recent past, certainly year to date. So from here, I did wanna share with you, I mentioned that there are areas that are holding in, and I'm gonna share with you a couple of stocks from those select areas. While utility stocks were not the top performer this week, utility stocks were down 2.4%, a little bit more than the S&P 500. There are standouts in this group, and I'm going to go ahead and share with you a couple of the stocks because it's certainly not what we are seeing in the broader markets. This is Duke Energy, D-U-K, and I'm pointing this stock out because we can use historical precedent as it relates to the stock having a significant move, building a period, a base period of consolidation where it has a back and fill price action second leg up. We're currently in this base building phase. Now, one thing to bear in mind during this ba uh, base building versus the prior is that we are now in an overbought position. So a third leg up, while it would be welcome, it may take a lengthier period of consolidation. But a couple of facts about Duke that make it attractive during this period. It is a low multiple stock. It's trading at 22 times earnings. I'm going to pull up a full quote here and share with you where you can get this information. So here we are. Actually, it's trading at 23 times. And in most cases, that's going to be using your trailing four quarter earnings. And then take a look at the yield, 3.4%. And this is where if there is an appetite for equities, by and large, lower multiple, higher yielding stocks are catching investors' eyes. But Another component as it relates to Duke, and I will say it does relate to other utility stocks. DUK this week announced that they are raising utility rates by 8.3%. And I've talked about this in the past, certainly where I am in California, we've seen significant increases in our utility bills, but unfortunately, as a consumer, we don't have a lot in the way of an ability to push back. So that increased uh, rate, it's not that they're trying to stick it to their customers. They are seeing increased cost. But the bottom line is their ability to raise rates, and it's very similar in the Staples area where they're raising prices on food and other products, their ability to pass on their increased cost 
is uh, helping them maintain an uptrend. And I talked about that nice yield as well. Let's take a look at another company within, and a lot of these that I'm sharing with you relative to the utility group, they do, uh, well, this is an outlier, Southern Company, SO. They are strictly electricity, but we can take a look at those same components, a three and a half percent yield, a little bit higher on the multiple, but it has had a significant uptick, but it is still in a confirmed uptrend. We may see a continuation pause, but this is an example of some of these companies in the utility space that are pulling back, but certainly not to the extent of the broader market, AEE, 2.4% yielder. So what I was sharing with you before is those that are holding in well do tend to be in the uh, natural gas as well as electricity space. And that nat gas area is another vibrant area. This is XEL, 2.5% yielder to 25% multiple. So I think you get the idea there. From here, I did want to share with you, I talked about that possibility of hedging relative to what is taking place in the markets. And the hedges that I'm sharing with you are primarily interest rate related. So let's take a look at the first ETF that could be a potential, it certainly already had a run here. This is ProShares Ultra Short, the US Treasury. So it is three times the inverse of the price of the 20 year bond. So many of you may be familiar that as the as yields increase, bond prices go down. And so what this is doing is the inverse of that decline in the bonds pricing, very much in a confirmed uptrend, another uh, potential hedge that we can take a quick look at. And again, a lot of these are going to be, that was a three times, and that's not something certainly normally that I would traffic in because you have that three times on the upside uh, in the event that we were to see bonds be uh, go higher in price, you could see this very quickly drop. But here is one that is not three times, it's not leveraged. TBT, it's the ultra short, quite simply on that 20 year treasury a bond. So that is certainly an idea. And last up, I did want to just take a quick look, I'm trying to think if we did already, but uh, take a quick look at that US dollar. And there are any number of hedges against a rising dollar, as well as relative to inverse to the broader markets. So I am going to leave it at that. For those of you that haven't already, this would be an ideal time to subscribe to my MEM Edge report using that link below. You want to stay on top of these broader markets. Make sure that your, your own, your portfolios are safe. And again, where the pronounced weaknesses relative to strength. And I mentioned I do have a possibly once in a lifetime eight week mentorship that is going to begin next week. The link below will have a lot in the way of information. For those of you that would like more, you can email me. I can provide further insight, but it will be very, very detailed as far as going into how you can trade this highly volatile period and continue to outperform the broader markets. But it is designed as a way to have a system so that when these markets turn, you can take advantage of the renewed strength as it takes place. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you here next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.